What's up everybody, Lynn Ray here. Today is day number two in my Learning to Code series. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically putting forth my uh, first 100 days in learning how to code, putting it on the internet, putting it on YouTube for the world to see, for you to see. Uh, a, it gives me accountability. B, it also puts that work out into the world and shows everyone my process and what I'm going through at this point. So, without further ado, I've got a new intro here, so go ahead and check it out and tell me what you think. Alright, so, what do you think about that intro? It's actually an old one that I had a long time ago. I just uh, lost the file and I uh, found it just the other day. And, uh... Just uh, now I'm going to start putting it on my videos. So let me know what you think. Also, it has nothing to do with coding. I found my my uh, my Joby attachment. I've been looking for this thing for probably maybe a few months now. But I found the Joby attachment. Now I can actually do vlogs using my actual Joby piece. Nothing to do with coding. All right. So here I am right now. I'm in a process of learning HTML and CSS at this point. Um, I've, I've got a pretty good handle on HTML and so what I'm going to do right now is this is, I, I finished the HTML portion uh, yesterday and so today I'm going to start on learning CSS. Uh, I've got dabbled a little bit in CSS last week. I thought CSS was, was pretty complicated. I don't know. It, it's just, it seems pretty complicated to me at this point. It just seems like a bunch of stuff just thrown in. And, um, but hopefully by the end of this lesson, I'll have a good understanding on how to uh, format CSS or, or type code CSS. All right, so here we go. This is my first time clicking on this, so we'll see what happens. All right, prerequisites. So again, you guys are coming along on this journey with me. All right. This is my first time seeing this. I recommend you can la 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 la. I already did that. So I do have a, I think I have a pretty decent understanding of the, the basic CSS uh, syntax. Wait a minute. What's happening here? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So let's check out this. So the outcome, it says you will learn many aspects of styling web pages from setting up the correct file structure to editing text and colors to creating attractive layouts. You'll be able to customize the appearance of your web page to suit your every need. Oh, but before I get into that, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little ADD. I'm a freaking Gemini. I'm all over the place. I want to show you guys my, my website here. So I actually have a website. Um, I have a video that I'll probably put up um, tonight, and I'll put it on YouTube. And this is my website at, the, at this point. Yeah, can't talk right now. At this point. Um, very basic, right? It's basic because I don't know a lot about web coding. So this is pretty much the extent of my knowledge right now. I know how to do basic HTML, uh, hyperlinks and things like that. So this is pretty much where I am. Uh, as I grow in this whole web uh, development area, this page will evolve. So um, this is day number two. This is what it looks like, right? Day number 100, it better look nice. It better look pretty. Uh, but at this point, day number two, this is what I got. All right, back to the lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. I'm taking too much time. All right, learn. All right, so here we go. All right, intro to CSS, the basic structure of every web page. All right, so this is all very familiar. That's that's a link there for CSS, the style sheet. All right, the basic structure everywhere page, HTML is very plain on its own. As you can tell, HTML, this is strictly HTML right here. Very plain, nothing fancy. All right, the beautiful websites you see across the internet are styled with a variety of tools, including CSS. CSS or cascading style sheets is a language that web developers use to style the HTML content on the web page. If you're interested in moderating in colors, font, and anana shadows, Images, elements, positioning, more CSS is a tool for your job. Uh, in this lesson, you'll learn how to select which HTML elements you wish to style and set up your CSS file structure. Okay, so just um, I've got a, um, I guess it's I guess he's a family member. He actually went to a uh, a coding 
school called, I think it was Hack Reactor. And uh, what I found interesting about Hack Reactor, I kind of read up on it a little bit. Uh, Hack Reactor apparently has a, a very large focus on JavaScript. Now, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm new at this, right? So I don't really know a lot about JavaScript, but I didn't realize JavaScript was, was so important. But uh, apparently this is, this is a really reputable coding school. Uh, and uh, he, uh, in, in this coding school, focuses a lot on JavaScript. So I realized that uh, I've got to get this HTML and CSS down and, and tackle JavaScript. Because, because apparently, just through the, the limited research that I've been doing, JavaScript is super important. Uh, and I didn't realize that. All right. Instructions. Take a look at the code and browse to the right. The code is plain HTML without any styling. Let's take a quick look at the power of CSS. I'm going to move this over just slightly. There we go. All right, copy the following line of code, paste it on line five and run your code. So let's look at this. So link. I, I know from previous lessons, basically link is uh, it's, it's it's basically linking this particular page, whatever this this href is, it's a CSS sheet to this page. So it's just applying whatever's on that CSS page to this regular index.html document. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to look, uh, line five, copy and paste there, and then type text slash CSS relation style sheet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run it and see what happens. Whoa! All right, all right, all right. That looks pretty cool. That's wow. Well, I'm 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 scared to look at this and see what's on that side there. Actually, I'm going to look. Holy smokes! So, as you can see, I'm kind of scrolling through this. It's just a bunch of what looks like gibberish at this point. And I say at this point because a few days ago, this looked like gibberish to me, but I, now I have a pretty decent understanding and I can recognize uh, what this is doing. And so, but right now this looks like, man, this looks like gibberish. All right, what happened? Take some time to explore and experiment with the code in style.css. Okay, so it's wanting me to go through and change some things. So here, let's do this. So I'm going to say, I mean, I'm not going to get too deep into this. I'm just going to change it up a little bit, see what happens. Uh, 50, just to see what happens here. So let's run it, see what happens. Oops, I don't know what I just did there. All right, anyways. So... Let's find something that I wreck Jumbotron container header. I would have assumed, oh, that's the line height. Oh, it's okay. So I'm gonna change this here just to see what happens. I'm just gonna put 180, see what happens here. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this innovation cloud will, will get larger. See what happens. Nope, I have no clue. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and Move on to the next part, um, HTML body. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here. All right, well, I'll figure it out as I go here. Part number one, so inline style. So I actually learned a little bit about inline styles before. Uh, so this is, uh, isn't 100% new. Uh, it is still not fresh though. All right, inline styles. Although CSS is a different language than HTML, it's possible to write CSS code directly within HTML code using inline styles. Yep. Uh, to style an HTML element, you can add the style attribute directly to the opening tag. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, in the, the lesson that I had before, the style tag actually goes within the head here. So I'll go ahead and press enter and style, but I'm not gonna jump ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see where it tells me to do it. Oh no, that's not right. So inline would be in line with this. That's right. So I would be style here. But but I think in order to do that, you have to have something up here in the head area. 
All right, but let's continue reading. Let's not confuse myself here. All right, after you add the attribute, you can set it equal to the CSS styles you'd like to apply to that element. Okay, P style, color red. So I would color the letters red. I'm learning the code. All right, the code in the example above demonstrates how to use inline styling. The paragraph element has a style attribute within its opening tag. Let's see. Yep. Next, the style attribute is set equal to color, colon, red, semicolon, which will set the color of the paragraph text to red within the browser. All right. You might be wondering about the syntax of the following simple code, color, and learn. At the moment, the details of the syntax are not important. You'll learn more about CSS syntax and other exercises. For now, it's important to know that inline styles are a quick way of directly styling an HTML element. If you'd like to add more than one style with inline styles, simply keep adding the style attribute and make sure to end the style with a semicolon. All right, let's take a look at this here. I gotta get comfy here. And my back is hurting right now. I went and played football yesterday with my boy for like an hour and a half, maybe two. I'm not sure exactly how long. And yeah, my back is killing me right now. I didn't even go to the gym this morning. All right. So these, I would color turn it red you now, so the font size is 20 pixels. All right. An index using my styles to set the font family of the first paragraph to Arial. Okay. So I'm going to, first paragraph, I'm not even going to look over here. I'm not going to look over here. I'm just going to see if I can remember it here. So it'd be style equals, oops. see if I can retain some of this information here. Uh, so it's always that, and then it wants, what does it want? I'm, I'm not looking over there. Uh, font family area. So I'm going to go font family and then always a colon and then Arial, is that how you spell it? Arial and then a semicolon. Boom. And then we're going to press enter. I mean run, see if it works. Oh, what did I do wrong? Font dash family. Did I not do it correct? Did I spell? Oh, I spelled it wrong. Ariel. Oh, and it's still wrong. What am I doing wrong? So font dash family. Colon space. Ariel. Semicolon. Quotation. So I'm not sure what's happening here. Oh, it's right. What happened? Oh, I guess it was it was the spelling. All right, so I'm over freaking myself out. So it was the spelling that was wrong. All right, go ahead and move on. So basically, it's saying you can do inline styles by basically going into the particular tag or of that that element that you want to use, the opening tag, and you will put in style equal quotation. It can be font family, font size, or whatever that attribute is you you want to use. I don't particularly know all of the attributes. I just remember a few of them just from previous lessons, uh, like padding, font family, font size. Um, yeah, I don't know a lot of them. All right. All right, so the style tag. Inline styles are a fast way of styling HTML, but they also have limitations. If you want to style, for example, multiple H1 elements, elements you would have to add inline styling to each element annually, and that would suck. In addition, you would also have to maintain HTML code when additional H1 elements are added. That makes sense. So using the style tag will make it a little bit easier to keep everything uniform. Fortunately, HTML allows you to write CSS code in its own dedicated section with the style tag. CSS can be written between opening and closing style. Tag to use the style element, it must be placed inside the head element. Oh, that's what I was talking about earlier. So, so basically, you would put it in the style, the head element. Right, that would be right here. All right, after adding a style tag in the head section, you can begin writing CSS. All right. 
The CSS code in the example above changes the color of all paragraph text to red and also changes the style of the text to 10 pixels, or excuse me, 20 pixels. And now that the syntax is code matches, for the most part, the syntax you use for inline style. The main difference is that you can specify which elements to apply the styling to. It's a good point. Again, the detail of CSS syntax in the example above aren't important at the moment. You will learn more about detail of CSS syntax in later sessions. Okay. So the purpose of this is just to understand that in order to apply CSS to all of the particular portions you want, uh, you would have to do it within the two style tags, the opening and closing style tag, here in the head section. All right, so got that. All right, first add style element in the head index to make sure to delete the inline style that you had in paragraph. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Style, and then, and let's find where's that. Uh, so this is the one I just did. So close that. Wants me to delete that. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. See what happens. All right, should get a check there. Now it says add inline styles that you're, wait, add the inline styles that you move from the paragraph element to the style element in the head. All right, so I'm gonna try and, uh, I'm not gonna scroll up and look at the, the answer up there going off memory here. So let's do, it wants to do, so P, and then space, and then it's the crazy brace, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then it would be the font family, uh, colon, and then Arial. And I think that's it. If that's correct, I'll be impressed here. Sweet, nice. All right, there we go. So this would be the correct, proper way of doing it right here. And I think that's what I did, so it looks good. All right, so I've done this once before, so it's not you know completely new, but I've only done it a few times. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next portion, number four. I never started my timer. I, don't, I didn't mention it earlier. I mentioned it in another video, but I like to work in 25 minute increments. Uh, that just gives me you know, 25 solid minutes to, to, to work hard and get this stuff down. And then I'll uh, rest for five minutes and I'll just kind of repeat that as many uh, rounds as I need. Uh, tonight I won't be doing it too many rounds because I am tired right now. I went camping this weekend and I'm beat. And then I played football yesterday, my back hurts, and I just wanna get some rest right now. But I'll probably do tonight around maybe two or three rounds. I won't record all two or three rounds, just maybe one round, this, this round. <laughs> all right, moving on. The CSS file. Developers avoid mixing code by storing HTML and CSS code in separate files. I guess that's this one, the CSS style or style.css. CSS files contain only CSS code. You can create CSS files by using the CSS file name extension like so. So style.css. Um, I've actually seen that before. I've seen someone use stylesheet.css and this one uses style.css. So I'm assuming it's just personal preference so there is no real um, definitive way of putting it. It's just so you know that it is the style sheet. All right, with a CSS file, you can write all the CSS code needed to style a page without sacrificing the readability and maintainability of your HTML file. That makes sense. So the HTML file will have all the basic HTML stuff, so it'll be very easy to read, whereas a CSS file contains all of the, what I call gibberish earlier, uh, and so if they're separated, it's easier to, to address and, and correct the HTML file. And it's also easier to, you know, address the CSS file because they're not combined. Makes sense. All right, take a look at uh, index.html, cut the CSS code in between the opening and closing tags, style tags, and paste it directly on a new file called CSS. All right. Let's go ahead and cut you out back. Cut this. That's weird. So I just noticed something here. I didn't put the closing style tag. So this, I'm just gonna 
show you how it should have been. And it didn't correct me. That's kind of strange. So this is how it should have looked. It should have been the opening style tag, the, the attribute here, the, the, the P font family Arial, and then a closing style tag. I didn't put that, but it still marked it as correct. So I'm assuming uh, HTML is smart, uh, smart enough to address that or fix it uh, or understand what I meant, but it's still not proper. So proper would have been the opening and closing style tag. So it's asking me to cut these out, so I'm going to go ahead and cut. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste over here. It says cut the code in between. Okay, so it's saying cut the code in between. So I don't need, since I'm doing a CSS sheet, I'm assuming I don't need these style tags. All right, let's go ahead and run it, see what happens. Nope. What did I do wrong? Make sure to delete the remaining style element, now empty from index. Dot. All right. I'm going to cheat here. Oh, no, I'm not going to cheat. It's not there. All right, so I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Uh, HTML, let's go ahead and get that closer there. I don't see any CSS on this particular page. And uh, cut the CSS code in between the opening and closing tags and paste it directly in a new file called style.css. Which is what I did. Did you remove, oh, here's the thing. Did you remove the paragraph style from the index.com and put it in? Yes. I thought I did that in the last one. Yes, I did. Absolutely. So I'm not quite sure what's happening right here. Um, I don't see any CSS so far. Wyoming, Africa. Yeah, I don't see any, any CSS here. So I'm not quite sure what's happening. I'm going to go ahead and press run again, maybe something. All right, I'm going to reset this. We're going to go back to here. So I'm just going to copy and see what happens here. Uh, run. Oh, I guess you do need this style here, which is interesting. OK. All right, so I hope that's correct. Um, so apparently you do, I, 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 mentioned, I said earlier you don't need the opening and closing style tags, but apparently you do. Okay, all right, we'll run with that. So I have to make that a, um, a log that in the brain there, always use the style tag in CSS. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Let's see how much time we got here. All right, linking the CSS file. If I remember correctly, it was the opening link tag, and then it said um, ref something. Oh, H. Um, I thought it said ref, but oh, it's ref. All right, linking the CSS file. Perfect. We successfully structured uh, separated structure, uh -huh, but the web page still looks bland. I'm not sure exactly. I would change that. Okay. So it just changed the, the font to the paragraph there. All right, when HTML and CSS code are in separate files, the files must be linked. Otherwise, the HTML file won't be able to locate the CSS code and the styling will not be applied. You can use the link element to link HTML and CSS files together. The link element must be placed within the head of the HTML file. It is a self-closing tag, so I don't need to put a, a closing with the forward slash. It's just uh, this here. Self-closing tag requires the following three attributes. href, okay, so you have to do all three of those. href, which is uh, like the anchor element, yeah. So href will actually probably be styled.css, that's the, that's the anchor. Uh, 
Uh, that's the, the value. Must be in the address or path to the CSS file. Got it. The type, this attribute describes the type of document that you are linking to, in this case, a CSS file. The value of this attribute should be set to text slash CSS. Interesting. You would think that since it's coming, I guess it's on the HTML, since it's on the HTML file, you have to tell it that it's a CSS file. You got it. Okay, that makes sense. And relation. Uh, this attribute describes the relationship between the HTML file and the CSS file because you're linking to a style sheet. The values should be set to style sheet. It's so interesting. It seems a little redundant. Maybe it's maybe it's something I'm not understanding, something I'm not getting here, but it seems very redundant here. But uh, I'm assuming there's probably hundreds of other types of relations, relationships, and things like that. And, that I don't know of yet. All right, when linking an HTML file and a CSS file together, the link element will look like the following. So it's always href, and then this will actually say uh, style.css if I were to do it. Uh, let's see. And type is text slash CSS and relationship style sheet. Note that the example above, the path to the style sheet is a URL. That's true. Specifying the path to the style sheet in the URL is one way of linking a style sheet. If the CSS file is stored in the same directory as your HTML file, then you can specify a relative path, which is which is which is what you would do if it were your website. Most likely, you would have the CSS uh, on your um, just in your um, domain folders. All right, then you specify a relative path instead of URL, like so. And so we talked about this. Well, I talked. I, I, I learned this yesterday. So this dot forward slash just basically tells, um, just is basically saying that this particular file style.css is in the same folder as the other page, the other page that you're trying to link to. If it were a dot dot forward slash, that means it's one uh, one folder below. So it's just how it, or maybe it's, yeah, it's, I won't get into that because I'm not quite positive, but I do know for sure that this right here indicates that it's in the same folder as the, the current file. All right, using a relative path is a very common way of linking a style sheet. Let's link the style sheet style.css to the HTML file index. Uh, first, add the link. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not sure why this is still here, but I'm going to go ahead and delete that because that doesn't seem like it belongs there since I have it on the other sheet. All right, so let's go ahead and link, link, and then let's see, it's the href equals and then dot forward slash style dot css and then quotations Um, and then, so it was, it was href, and then it was uh, type. That's right. Type equals equals quotations uh, text dash css, and then quotations, and then the last was relationship or rel. Then that's quotation style sheet quotation and then oops spelled that wrong actually I should have taken that off boom there we go so that should be correct let's find out this is all off the dome here with that one that looking at it that one time and it's all correct so perfect so uh, anytime you're linking your CSS page. Uh, to an HTML, it's got to have this uh, link tag, right? And link the link tag is self-closing, and it has to have the href, which shows where that particular file is, uh, the type, which tells what type of file it is, which seems kind of odd because CSS indicates that it's a CSS file. 
and then relationship just say saying it's a style sheet all right so hopefully I remember that next time we run through that all right so you finally add the relationship attribute and set it to the correct value keep an eye on the first paragraph's font it should appear different from the destination's description when a style sheet is correctly linked but I thought I did correctly link it Finally, add the relationship attribute, set it to the correct value. Is it not at the correct value? No, well, it's not because there's a, see, it needs a quotations there. And now it should run properly, hopefully. Yes. So, this, I, I did this yesterday, and literally in, in, in coding, if you leave out one little thing, a semicolon, a quotation, it could throw the whole, the whole thing off. So just now I didn't put that quotation here in style sheet, and I got an error there. And so get those things, those things right. So attention to detail. I saw this thing the other day. It was saying that um, software developers are more like more akin to detectives than creators because their you know, their their job is to detect things is to make sure things are in the proper order or to find problems so they are more akin to being detectives police officers than I shouldn't say police officers but detectives versus designers all right moving on number six all right, tag name. CSS can select HTML elements by using an elements tag name. A tag name is the word for word or character between HTML angle brackets. All right. For example, in HTML, the tag for the paragraph is the P. Yeah, that. The, syn the CSS syntax for selecting P element is it's just P and uh, curly braces. Okay, so that's different. So in HTML, we have to use these uh, greater than, less than symbols uh, when opening and using tags. But in CSS, we use create the curly braces. I always want to say crazy braces, but they're called curly braces. It's funny. I've used curly braces more times in the last week than I have my entire life. In the example above, all paragraph elements will be selected using the CSS selector. The selector in the example above is P. The selector in the example above is P. Note that the CSS selector matches the HTML tag for that element, but without the angle braces. In addition, two curly braces uh, follow immediately after the selector, uh, open and closing brace respectively. Any CSS properties will go inside the curly braces to style the selected elements. All right. So let's go ahead and scroll down and style CSS, add a selector for H1 elements. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. So the selector would be H1 and then the crazy curly braces. There we go. That's it. So I just press enter so I can just put whatever in there with the next step. Let's go ahead and run it. it should be correct. And it is. Inside the curly braces of the H1 uh, selector, just declare right color maroon. So I'm going to go ahead and color. Oops. So, well, I need something to drink here. All right, that's cool. So it turned this maroon. Go ahead and press uh, enter. See what happens. Okay. All right. Next step. So class name. So class name, I think, refers to um, inline, or maybe not. We'll see. CSS is not limited to selecting elements by. Let's see what time we got here. And I got two minutes. I'll finish this page here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a break. And again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around <laughs> while I struggle through this. All right, CSS is not limited to selecting elements by tag name. The HTML elements can have more than just a tag name. They can also have attributes. HTML elements can have more than just a tag name. They can have attributes, which I, yeah, I knew that already. 
One common attribute is the class attribute. It also, it's also possible to select an element by its class attribute. For example, consider the following HTML. Uh, P class equals brand. Uh, Soul shoe company. Oh, that okay. I think I got it now. The paragraph element uh, in the example above has a class attribute within the P element. So this is how you can. This is basically how to say it. Now the class attribute is set to brand. To select this element using CSS, we could use the following CSS selector. Okay. So basically, this is how you can uh, discriminate. Right? And so instead of it applying these particular styles to all of the uh, all of the particular the piece, the P tags, you can basically tell it that uh, the ones that's uh, with the class of brand do something different to it. So so it'll do so with all the so I guess to clarify, so all the P tags will have this except for the one that has a class of brand. All right, and so it's the same. So, so let's see. So it's dot brand. So anytime you use a class, you have looks like you have to use a dot before it. To select an HTML element by its class using CSS, a period yes must be prepended to the class name. In the example above, class uh, above case, the class is brand. So the CSS selector for it is dot brand. All right, that's my timer there. I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, page out, and then I'm going to go ahead and take me a five-minute break. All right, in CSS, in style CSS, dot CSS, add a CSS selector for the HTML element with the class of title. So, ooh. Okay, so this is actually asking me to do something. So it's asking me to change to put a, a particular CSS um, statement or element here and then I'm probably gonna have to go to HTML in a few here and do something um, and add a class to the title okay or add a class to one of the headers or something like that so T-O-T-L-E and then space and but my if not brace. I will, uh, thanks it. for watching guys, and uh, like, subscribe, uh, comment, see. share, all see of that good stuff, help me out here. Inside and, uh, the curly uh, brace of the dot title Peace. selector, you just declared right color, teal, all right. Color teal, boom, that's that. All right, mm -hmm. this code will change the color of the title to teal since the H1 element as a class of title, which I didn't do. So I guess it did that for me here. So right now, so yes, class of title. And so it's gonna change this to teal. Let's go ahead and run it and see how it works. This should turn to teal, perfect. So that turned to teal. Excellent day. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click next here, multiple classes next. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click pause here, and um, I will, uh, well, first of all, thank you all for watching this, man. 25 minutes of me struggling. No, I'm not really struggling, but it's definitely a, a little challenge. Uh, I, I seem to be getting it fairly well at this point, so I'm happy about that. But again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I think I'll put a number part two on here as well. All right, what is up, guys? I am back with part two of day two. So... Let's get into this here. All right, so multiple classes, CSS setup and selectors. All right, we can use CSS to select an HTML's element class attribute by name. So far, we've selected elements using only one class name per element. One class name per element. Okay, all right. If every HTML element had a single class, all the style information for each element would require a new class. Luckily, it's possible to add more than one class name to an HTML element's class attribute. Uh, for example, perhaps there's a heading element that needs to be green and bold. You could write two CSS rules like so, green and bold, color, green, dot, bold, font, weight, bold. Okay. All right. All right. So 
I've got to learn these bad boys here, the color green and font, you know, these these particular attributes. So there's, you know, it seems to be so many attributes. So I've got to learn these bad boys. Uh, all right. I'll have to probably, in, like I said in my other, I think I said in my other video, invest in one of these CSS books that has, you know, pretty much the list of all the attributes and things like that. Because it's, it seems like there's, it's almost impossible to remember all of these attributes. I mean, there's so many attributes for all these different languages, you know. All right, then you could include both of the, these classes in the one HTML element, like so, green dash bold. Okay, got it. All right, we can uh, we can add multiple classes to an HTML elements class as we by separating them with a space. That's like so. So there's a space there. All right, so so there's no colons or anything like that in the class. This enables us to mix and match CSS classes, create many unique styles without writing a custom class for every style combination. Either. Yeah, that's so that's I think that's pretty cool. So this this seems to lessen the amount of work. If you had to go through each one of these uh, tags and put in uh, the particular, I guess, uh, attribute, you know, the, it would take forever. But with this, you could go on one sheet, type it all out, it seems, and then you just go in here and put class equals bold, space green, space 16 font or whatever, uh, Arial font. All right, so in style that CSS type, and I add an X and then I make a title and stand out more by making all the letters uppercase. Write a class named uppercase, then write this inside of its curly braces. Okay, so it's asking me to write a class named uppercase. So as anytime you're doing uh, it in the style that CSS, if you're making a class, you want to use a dot, and so it's uppercase and then the curly brace and then it wants what's the one text dash transform t e x t dash text dash transform and then there's a colon and I think it's a upper, oh yeah, uppercase yeah. uppercase and the semi and that's it I'm gonna press enter there get it on the next line there all right that seems fine and I'm assuming it's gonna it obviously it wants me to make something bold make the title bold so I'm assuming that's what it's gonna have me do I'm gonna go ahead and press run anyways just so it'll see if I all right good all right now you can add the class to the title element all right navigate uh, da, 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 da. to the center on, on page line 11 there's an h1 element that has a class of title add the uppercase class to this element. All right, number eleven. So, so they already they already typed class out for me. I wish they would have. Yeah, you know, I guess they had to do that because of this title. So here I would just do since this is actually in the actual H1 element, you don't put the the dot. So it's just uppercase. Hopefully, run, and boom, perfect. So notice here, this has is now uppercase. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, so I forgot, did I set my timer? I didn't set my timer. But what I'm gonna do, basically, hopefully this doesn't take uh, 25 minutes. It is getting late, it's 8.47 uh, right now. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna hit the sack and I gotta get up early tomorrow morning. Five o'clock, five o'clock. All right, ID name. If an HTML element needs to be styled uniquely, no matter what classes are applied to the element, we can add an ID to the element. To add an ID to an element, the element needs an ID attribute. Uh, ID equals quotations large dash title. Interesting. Then CSS can select HTML elements by their ID attribute. <clears throat> to select an ID element, CSS prepends the ID name with a hashtag pound <laughs> it's funny it's called hashtag now all right for instance if we receive uh, if we want to select a small element in the element an example above it will look like this pound hashtag large dash title so that's pretty interesting that's pretty weird so anytime you're using a class you would use a dot so this would be a class that's a class, and if you want to use an ID, 
if you want to put add an ID. So this could be uh, ID equals uh, paragraph one, uh, or so paragraph one. So so that's oh, actually I guess you had to put the quotations there, but anyway so. I won't do that now. So I'm, I'm jumping ahead of the gun because I've, I've actually done this already. So a little, this is obviously it's similar to what we just did using the uh, the classes, except this is now using an ID. All right. All right. The ID name is large dash title. Therefore, the CS selector for it is hashtag large dash title. In style CSS, add a CSS selector uh, for the element with an ID of article dash title. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go down here. And so it would be um, so it's not a dot, it would be the hashtag. There we go. I have to think about that for a second. Article dash title and then curly brace inside of its curly brace, right. Uh, font, font family, and then, uh, quotation, uh, and then, and then uh, um, I know I could probably copy and paste this, but I'm a horrible typer, so I want to type everything out, and you know, just get a little practice at typing. You'd think I'd be a better typer. I type all day long, but I'm not. All right, so that's that, and I'm assuming it's going to have me uh, find on the index whatever, whichever one says article title, and then add this, um, you know, add cursive and capitalize to the class. Oh, excuse me. Yes, whichever one has the ID uh, I guess indicator. Uh, it's probably going to ask me to uh, add the class, I think, or maybe I'm way off. Oh, no, I am way off. Okay, that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and run it, so it's going to probably ha it's going to have me find something. All right. On line 11, add an ID attribute to H1. All right, line 11. Yes, there we go. And so ID. Uh, equals, and then it wants me to change the article, article title, and so space. There we go. And so basically, article title is going to change uh, font family to cursive. So this is going to change the cursive and also be capitalized. I'm assuming. I think that's right. H1. Yeah, that's right. All right, go ahead and press start or run. See what happens. All right, there we go. It's so weird though. What's interesting is that it just it just had me do. Let's see, class title uppercase. So it's actually it made me turn it uppercase. So it seems like this. That's weird, because I have uppercase for the class, and then I also have um, text ramp capitalized, but it's not capitalized. So I'm not, maybe I'm not understanding that properly, but uh, that doesn't seem correct here. All right, we'll go ahead and run it. Oh, I already ran it. We'll move on. All right, so. I am going to do this for eight more minutes and then I'm going to hit the sack because um, it's uh, running out of running out of time here. I've got to wake up super early and uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. I've got a lot of uh, clients or patients to see. Classes and IDs. CSS can select HTML elements by their tag, class, and ID. CSS classes and IDs have different purposes, which can affect 
which one you use to style HTML elements. CSS classes are meant to be reused over many elements by writing CSS classes. You can style elements in a variety of ways by mixing classes on HTML elements. For instance, imagine a page with two headlines. One headline needs to be bold and blue, the other needs to be bold and green. Instead of writing separate CSS rules for each headline that repeat each other's code, it's better to write a bold CSS rule and a green CSS rule and a blue CSS rule. Then you can give one headline the bold class and the other the blue. <laughs> the, <laughs> the bold green and bold blue. Alright. Well, classes are meant to be used many times, and IDs meant to style only one element. As we'll learn in the next exercise, IDs override the style of tags and classes. Okay, so maybe that's why. But it still says capitalize. Um, I think capitalize means capitalize the first letter of each word. Okay, so that's why that's why this was was confusing me. Uh, here, oh, I shouldn't have to actually do that. So um, because this H1 tag has uh, let's see a class of title an uppercase, which is the color teal, which is teal, and uppercase, which is, it should, theoretically, all of these letters should be uppercase, but ID overrides the uh, these class. I, the ID will override the class, therefore, um, this particular word here will be cursive and capitalized. So the first letter is capitalized. Makes sense. All right. All right. Confused a little bit, but uh, I got I got it. Well, classes are meant to be used many times. An ID I already said that. Many IDs override classes. Uh, da, da, da. They should be used sparingly and only on elements that need to always appear the same. All right. Got it. On the line 13 of index HTML, there's an element that displays the time the article of the page was published. Add a class attribute with the class of publish dash time. Okay. So line 13 equals, all right. So, so we want to do uh, class, uh -huh. where's it at? Okay, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Let's see, equals, man, I'm just, I'm getting tired here. I am, uh, publish time, okay, and I'm assuming it's going to have me do the, on the other side, all right, let's go ahead and run that. All right, at a publish time class selector on a CSS, so that's, I always forget that word, the selector. All right, so let's go ahead and put the, uh, so it's a class, so it will be dot uh, publish time, and then it's going to probably, I haven't read the rest, but I'm going to, it's going to give me something to get, oh, it wants it to be gray. All right, so color, there we go, gray. All right, so that's it. So I, I think I have a pretty decent understanding, of, uh, I guess not. Publish dash time color make its text color gray. Oh, okay. So I didn't finish all the steps. So here I should probably put gray. Boom. Because publish time. Ooh, is that right? No, that's not right, because I shouldn't have to put gray there. I should just put publish time. Publish time Publish time should turn it gray. There's not a space there. There's a space there. All right, so what am I doing wrong here? Publish time, color, gray. And let's go back to... This text color. Yeah. Mm 
I'm not sure what happened here. I'm gonna all right, let's see, 13, so that's good. So H6 class, publish dash time, so that should not be there. Everything's, that's correct. So this is good. I, I'm pretty sure that that's correct. So the class equals publish dash time. And then I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then, so it's something here. So it's not an ID, so it would not use a... So only IDs use pound. All right. Um, add a publish time class selector in style.css and make its text color. Oh, that's why. Text color. There we go. Should be. Nope. I guess that doesn't make sense because this is color teal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting tired here, man. Uppercase, but I'm going to figure this out. And then I'm going to hit the site. Publish P B L I S H T A M E. Oh, see, there it is. Semicolon. Semicolon, that'll screw it up every time. Exit, no, run. Okay, so yeah, so again, that's this is my second time doing this today. Um, I did it maybe one or two times yesterday. So little things, man, you got to be a detective. Um, missing one semicolon and the, the project does not work. So I'm going to go ahead and run, which I've already done, and I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Moving on to the next, and uh, tomorrow. I'm going to start off here, specificity. Um, I think I'm going to do it first thing in the morning. I don't know. We'll see. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, comment, share. And if you watch this whole video, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I love you. Um, thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to go shower. Inside.